Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kieran, I'm the Head of Mobile Engineering at Pillar. And um, as you can imagine, building a multi-chain wallet ourselves is very, very difficult and quite hard. So I'm here to talk about our journey, how we got here, and in what we're doing to help everyone else's developers get on board. So i um, just like to start by talking a little bit. And how did we get here? We united in something beautiful. This is, this is for sure. This is why we're here. This is why this conference has happened. This is why we travel to learn more about what we're doing now. Um, you know, the, the, we all started out um, with, with one chain. And um, it was uh, fantastic. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was this beautiful vision of like, decentralization. And I was like, oh my god, we're going to take down the banks, you know, we're going to take our control. It's going to be absolutely fascinating, you know, you know power, power to us, power to people. And, and lo and behold, you know, DeFi kicked off and, um, you know, this had a few problems. So the problem, beauty comes at a cost. As more and more many millions of people started to jump on, you know, what we know is like Ethereum mainnet, it starts to get congested. When it starts to get congested, <laughs> bad things happen, such as transaction fees start to go up. Um, we also saw, you know, um, bad actors start to enter, enter the fray. You know, front runners, which, you know, you might not say is a bad actor, but lots of people started to use the network heavily, and this started to drive up the cost of transactions. And then ultimately, you know, the average user, and I'm sure we've all been there, didn't really want to use the network anymore, right? And um, this was the problem. And I couldn't sell this to anyone, right? You know, I can't sell this to anyone and say, yeah, oh, by the way, your transaction for you, XYZ, they're going to be like, what? what? Well, I'm not going to pay that. So, you know, with Ethereum and the EVM machine being open source, um, inevitably, you know, what happened was people started innovating. They started forking, they started creating their own side chains. Now we have the rise of, uh, the rise of side chains. Um, some of them are becoming very, very popular, for example, like XDAI, Matic, et cetera, or Polygon now. And um, it was all going quite well, but we, we now have this problem where we have, we, we, we've got Ethereum, We've got main there, and then we've got all the side chains as well. And you're sort of in this world now where you sort of got to choose, choose your poison. You know, everyone knows Ethereum. It's like the, the big nightclub, you know. And then you've got all the side nightclubs that you might choose to go to, and the drinks might be a bit cheaper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, you know, we, we we have to make a choice. So, this brings us to like what I call like the boss level. And uh, the boss level to me is. You know, how do you convince the average human? You know, how do, how do you even explain this to the average person? Now, I say the average person, and what I'm really talking about, I'm talking about your, your friend doesn't really know crypto, but they want to get into crypto. You know, or they want to get into NFTs, or they want to get into DeFi, they want to make a trade. They've heard about it, but they don't know where to start. So let me tell you a story about me and my wife. Now, she, she knows what I do. I've been working at the pillar for four years. And I have probably spent about that much time trying to explain to her what, what Ethereum is. <laughs> and I, it took me four years, but I got there, right? It got to the point where she downloaded the pillow wallet. That was probably about two years worth of, two years worth of effort. Then it was like topping it up with ETH. We've got really far. This is big. This is big for my wife. And I just want to say, that she's not computer illiterate. She, she knows how to use phones, she knows how to use apps, she, knows, she, she understands like, the technology world, she's, you know, she's, she's not um, someone who doesn't know, you know how to use technology by any means. But this was still alien to her. So to get her this far and to explain how you know, transaction fees work, about network congestion, and how um, you know, the blockchain itself works. I mean, this was, this was gold, right? This is, I could not believe my luck. And we had reached this stage where she was about to send me 0.1 ETH. And this, I can't describe to you how far, how long it took me to get here, 
and I was so proud of her, and she was really invested. She was like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. I can't wait, you know, I'm gonna send you some ETH, I'm part of the DeFi world. You know, she, she was really into it, and I was, I was so happy. So, this is the pillow wallet. She's about to send me 0.1 ETH. Um, and she, you know, she looks at it, she's looking at this like, you know, as, as you would look at it as, as a banking app, for example. And then um, she becomes sort of focused on, on this bit, right? And she starts looking at the details, which I was sort of hoping she wouldn't do. And she starts looking at the details, she understands everything. But then she sort of sees this. And then all she can think about is that. This, this is, this is I, I'm starting to sweat, right? This is rough. Um, and then she just looks at me, and then she says, why am I paying £2.16? And I was like, well, okay, listen, you know how the network is congested and stuff like that, and, and you know, it's on the blockchain, and you've got to wait for a miner to sort of, you know, uh, validate it, and there's going to be, you know, there's going to be, a, and she just didn't care. She was like, why am I paying £2.16? Why am I being 2016? And then she, this is what, this is what she did. She got, she got the Barclays app out, and she turned me, she says, I can send you that amount of money for free, and I don't have to pay anything. And, and I was done. I didn't know what to say or what to do. And at that point, this is what was going through my mind, followed by this, and then followed by this between me and my wife, <laughs> that was too far, that was too far. But what I'm trying to say is this was the stopping point for, for the average person. We understand why we need to pay a transaction fee. In fact, most people are just happy to do that, that's great. But the average person will not do it. And the beauty of side chains and where we are now is that we can leverage, you know, the relatively low, sometimes almost like non-existent fees, um, to be able to make these transactions like almost, almost, almost cost-free, and thereby, therefore, onboarding users into the Ethereum world, but onto side chains instead, straight onto side chains, and this is becoming a. Um, quite a popular sort of move at this moment in time. You know, wallets are starting to onboard users straight onto side chains. So we have to ask ourselves a question, how do we go about that, right? If we're gonna break down this barrier and get people to like cross that chasm straight into, you know, the DeFi world, where we want them to be for the benefit of all of us and them, how are we gonna do that? How do we enable companies and developers to do this? So we knew what we had to do. The multi-chain world needs to be easy and accessible. Now we both know to, to, to onboard people into a multi-chain world in one go, it is not easy, it's not accessible, right? So at Pillar we, we, we went about building a platform that could do just that. So say hello to Etherspot. And this is the platform that we built that enables Developers to build multi-chain apps and dApps easily and quickly. It is your one-stop stop to the Ethereum multiverse. So, of course, just to start off, we support Ethereum um, and Mainnet, but we also support Binance Smart Chain, Phantom, XI, and Polygon. It's worth noting that our platform itself um, is just, is EVM compatible. So whatever chain, whatever it might be, if it's EVM compatible, works with this. And given that, anyone who has tried to build this sort of infrastructure before knows how hard it is. It is hard, it's ruthlessly hard. You know, you've got to set up your ingesters, you've got to maintain them, you've got to scale them, you've got to pay for them. It takes a whole DevOps team just to run this layer, and then you've got to think about security, scaling, you've got to think about how your data is distributed, where it's distributing it, what's the data, the shape of the data, it's incredibly hard. And we at Pillar, we've been trying to do this for years, so with some success, some not, 
This has ultimately resulted in, in Etherspot, um, but we've had a lot of trial and error and a lot of experience in trying to do this. So let me just show you how, just quickly, how we built the infrastructure, because it's not magic, right? So we've got nodes scanning on there, receiving data from all blockchains. This is our ingestion layer. And then we organize and shape the data into hot and cold storage. Uh, this just allows us to be more efficient with data that we think is going to be accessed sooner. Once it's finished, we'll just move into cold storage for cost efficiency as well. We have a ton of scalable microservices um, that is working with the data and constantly moving and shifting the data around. We deploy smart contracts on your behalf against your signature, so we can't access it, it has to be you. Um, and uh, we also read as well, whatever we can from the smart contracts. And then, Finally, we make this available to you via the EFISPOT SDK, which is open source, free to download. It's an NPM package. Also, it has direct access back to our API, so standard operations, like you can read it straight from the API, no need to call a smart contract. So, what can you do? Here's just some of the things that would help you as a company, or a developer, or just a hobbyist, jump onto the multi-chain garden wagon using EFISPOT. So we've got multi-chain balance and transactions. This is sort of standard stuff that maybe you'd expect, so we're just going to mention it here. Multi-chain ERC20 assets, multi-chain gas prices, ENS registration utilities with unstoppable domains compatibility, uh, and you can authenticate with your MetaMask, WallConnect, Chorus, or private keys. All faithful. All faithful private keys. And here, Here's what you can really do, and this is what makes Etherspot special. So, as part of the service itself, you get transaction batching for gas efficient transactions. Payment hubs, this lets you add liquidity and move it around different hubs, but we'll go into more about this in a minute. Peer to peer, off chain, layer two, whatever you want to call it, payment channels, uh, gasless, of course. Efficient contract management, which we'll go into again. And then the Etherspot playground, which allows you to prototype your ideas right now. So we'll go to each one of these. So we've got transaction batching for more efficient operations. So as you know, when we send a transaction, um, we have the payload, um, and then that enca is encapsulated in the transaction, and then that is how we, e we estimate the gas price on the transaction itself. But with Etherspot, by default, we batch all your transactions up to the size of one block. So you can put many transactions as, um, sorry, many, many data payloads, instructions, as one transaction, and then just get one gas price. For example, an approval and a transaction, they would just go as one batch. So you, you build your batch, submit it as one, and you get one gas price. This makes it easier for the user experience in having to do a separate approval, for example, um, and then in an actual transaction, you can do it together in one and make the user experience better and easier. Just one step less. For complex transactions as well, this is, this is very useful. Payment hubs. This is our off-chain layer two liquidity mechanism. So a payment hub, which you can create as many of them as you want, um, it simply you know, allows you to lock your asset, lock, lock assets amounts into the payment hub for liquidity purposes, which you can also remove if you haven't used it already. Um, the payment hubs can transfer to other payment hubs, so you can move your liquidity around to different payment hubs, whatever your application might need. Any ERC or 721 tokens are accepted. You can withdraw and settle all your assets, so that's like basically you can commit it to another wallet and then that would eventually end up on the blockchain once you send it there. Um, it uses an internal ledger. Some people have asked, and you're probably wondering, okay, well, how are you moving assets around, etc. We use a very light ledger. Um, there's no way you can go around that. But that's a, that's the, that's the service offering of a payment hub. And uh, you know, ultimately, it's just another a payment hub. It's just another Etherspot instance, which you can have hundreds, thousands of them if you wanted to. So, uh, this is how it would work in practice. 
you know, rocks didn't payment hard, COVID, stuff all that side. Here's your wallets, for example, on either side. And you can move the liquidity between the two, um, or between the three, sorry, and then eventually settle it in a wallet. Um, and then this, this would be sent to the blockchain to be the transaction. So, um, by the way, the examples I'm giving here, we've written this all up on our documentation. So you can go there and build that if you want to, including this example. Peer to peer payment channels. Easiest slide ever, just a line. This uh, mechanism that we have here literally transfers um, your assets from one wallet to another, no fees involved. It's just completely off chain and gasless. So what happens is when you instantiate a version of the ETH spot SDK, you actually get two addresses. You get a peer-to-peer -peer deposit address and a normal contract address. Your normal contract address, I guess, I guess is like your, your sort of dedicated balance that you want to keep for yourself. Your peer-to-peer -peer deposit address, it, this is like your liquidity providing address. This is the address you transfer your assets to, you're happy to move around move around the system. So we separate these two channels, so it's not a good idea to put them in one. Efficient contract management. So this is how we deploy our smart contracts. So when you first create a EFASPOT SDK instance, and of course you can have tens, hundreds, thousands of them, it's up to you. Uh, we use a create to address those off code to figure out where where your address space is going to live on the on, on, on mainnet or whatever chain it is. That way, we can give you your address straight away without you actually having to deploy anything, and you can be guaranteed that this is where your assets are going to go when we actually deploy your contract. Um, and actually, once you're at this stage and you've computed the contract address, you can start receiving assets straight away to that contract address, and we will start processing it for you. When we deploy your contracts, we try to make this as easy as transparent as possible. So there's two ways you can do it. The first way is you can call the SDK just to manually deploy your contract, if you so wish, if your application needs this. Or we will do it for you. You don't even need to think about it. And the way this works is, is EFASPOT will deploy your contract on your first transaction. So the first transaction you make will take care of it for you. You don't need to do anything. Um, so, for example, let's say uh, you want to make a transaction on one of the pools and you know, it requires an approval, for example. Um, as part of that approval, we will also send the contracts out for deployment, then run the approval. So this is how, this is how we work. It's, it's, it's as transparent as you want it to be. If you don't want to deal with smart contracts, don't worry about it. Don't even think about it. We've handled it for you. So we try to make this layer as transparent as possible. And then finally, we've got the EtherSpot Playground. Um, this is a web interface that we've used um, and we've built, and it is literally hosted by us, and it's a throwaway playground. So if you've got, uh, you've got an idea, for example, you can literally jump onto the playground and you can simply start using the service, all the FDK methods, you instantiate a version of the SDK, you can have Many, many windows, many versions of this window open, each representing a, a specific instance of the SDK, maybe one on XDI, Phantom, one on Testnet, for example. We also run our own um, uh, Etherspot um, POA uh, Testnet as well, which comes with a faucet, so you can just mint yourself like another ETH to test it. So, um, it's uh, no infrastructure or software needed, multi chain ready with Testnets. Debug your EtherSpot based app. So let's say you've got a problem in your app, you can't quite figure it out. You can load your keys or, or whatever auth method you're using into here, and then you can basically debug that account in here and find out what's wrong. <clears throat> just a bit more of an easier and powerful way just to see what's going on inside, inside that instance. Um, <clears throat> of course, connect with the MetaMask, Wallet Connectors, private keys. And then you can throw it away when you no longer need it. So this is what I mean by you know, it is just a playground. If you've got an idea, if you want to test out how the, how the SDK works, um, try moving assets around, try peer-to-peer, -peer, anything like that, set up a payment hub, just jump on, try it out. If you like it, you like it. You know, if you're done with it, close the window, period. Just, we're, we're, we're taking that 
we're taking the hit for you. So, um, so we, we tried to make it as easy as possible. <clears throat> so the ultimate thing here is, you know, people rock up and they're like, oh yeah, check out our new platform. It does this, it does that, it's brilliant. And like, By the way, only 10% of it is built. This is generally what tends to happen, right? And it's going to be a rough ride for developers only to find out that half the stuff that's promised um, isn't ready. And this, this is, can be quite frustrating. But we have, you know, the ultimate showcase for e for spot Which, at the end of the day, is our own wallet. And our own wallet, which is multi-chain by nature, um, is built entirely off the back of Etherspot. So this is in production, it's out now, iOS and Android, you can download it now, uh, see how it works, you know, it's multi-chain by nature, so you get to see that working in the wallet, it's beautiful. And then finally, um, I'm going to end on this slide, got two URLs for you, please take a picture for later. We've got try.ethospot.dev and then docs.ethospot.dev. So if you want to try it out now, just have a play around, you know, nothing off of, you know, no, no worries, you know, no risk, nothing to you. Give it a go, try.ethospot.dev and docs.ethospot.dev. We've got a load of guys on there. Actually, we've got five guys on how to build bridges, which is all the rage right now. So if you want to give it a whirl, build yourself a bridge, try a bit of bravers, we've got step-by-step -step instructions, um, including code samples as well. Um, links out to our SDK reference, and um, also the Etherspot playground. So uh, that's Etherspot in a nutshell. Uh, thank you for your time, I hope you found it interesting. And uh, yeah, happy to try and answer some questions for the Q&A. Yes, sir. What instruments do you have in relationship to privacy? Meaning if a court comes after an individual and they want, the judge wants to know where your assets are, how is it that pillar answers to uh, so, so, so your assets are stored on, on the blockchain. Once you, once, your, um, once you get your address, it's immediately visible on the blockchain. Because we, we reserve that address space for you. So, so you're not sending you're not sending the assets to us. You're, you're sending the assets to a space on Ethereum mainnet or whatever chain it is. Uh, you do not send the assets directly to us. We're basically we aggregate like the weeding service of it. Do you know what I mean? And that's all data that we work with, public data. So uh, aside from peer-to-peer off-chain stuff, where we do store data about that in our database, the rest of it is public, and you're just using the normal Ethereum public infrastructure as intended. You're not sending it to us. Like we made, we were very clear. Do you know what I mean? Like not very clear. Sorry, we, we were very conscious of that when we were building it. You know, it still has to, with the exception of payment hubs. You know, if if you are committing peer-to-peer -peer payments um, and off-chain liquidity, which we have to store the value in a database. Um, the rest of it is 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 on the Ethereum blockchain. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. What what kind of help would you, do you need to accept new developers from third parties? Um, sorry, can you repeat? Like, what, what what kind of help would you would do you need from from third parties except developers? And um, from third parties, do you mean like service providers and stuff like that? No, like. Uh, like I'm, a, I'm, I'm managing a fund, so like you know, there are like some resources, all kinds of resources you yeah. need. Like you know, people like the community managers, so like you know, yeah, that's what I'm asking. Oh, okay. So just in general, what sort of help do we need? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, we just want people to, to use this. Actually, okay. you know, we we we've laid the groundwork and we've done all the hard work in terms of like looking at what what's hot right now in the Ethereum space. You know, and what do people? Everyone's talking about bridges. You know, everyone's talking about gas payments, you know, NFTs, etc., etc. So what we tried to do is when we built Ethersport, when we planned it out, we were like, okay, well, what are the core underlying components that would enable people to make peer-to-peer -peer payments, you know, to make, you know, 
um, to, to, to set up a liquidity pool, for example. And then what we did is we basically productize every single bit of it, for example, payment groups. Peer-to-peer -peer payments, the SDK instances, like the different addresses, you know, we, we turned them into features on the platform. We just made them available to you. And then what we've done is with the guide, docs.eathspot.dev, um, because we have a lot of methods, right? We've got a lot of methods that do a lot of things. We've written the guide to help you basically stitch everything together. Um, so that's, that's, that's how we've approached that. In terms of like, what other help we need, I mean, we need, you know, it would be nice to get feedback on the platform, just from anyone, even if it's like community managers and stuff like that, because we need, we need them to understand how the system works as well. Um, because it can be a little bit daunting at first, because it's sort of an all singing, all dancing, you know, here, it does everything. But actually, we need some feedback to figure out, you know, what do we do best? So that will help. You all good? I think we're at time, but yeah, thank you so much, Kieran. All right, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.